Item number SCP-3029 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Because of the size and distance of SCP-3029, full containment is impossible. Some aspects of SCP-3029 are already well known among civilian media outlets, so completely hiding the anomaly through amnestics or editing of scientific data is implausible. However, such methods may be employed to convince astronomers that the observed dimming pattern is a result of dust clouds or comets obscuring the star from view. SCP-3029 is the cause of the phenomenon affecting KIC-8462852, an F-type main sequence star located in the Cygnus constellation, roughly 1,280 light-years from Earth. This star dims periodically. While at first assumed that this indicated a transiting exoplanet, the irregular nature of this dimming ruled out that possibility. SCP-3029 has been determined to be an array of large reflective objects in an orbit around a star with an average altitude of AU. It is currently believed that these function as solar collectors and have been known to obscure a maximum of over 20% of the star's light. The star system also appears to move at a calculated rate of roughly 0.1 c relative to the Earth. The cause of this motion is a large curved reflector, measuring roughly 2 AU across and directed perpendicular to the galactic plane. This reflector is aligned such that only the dark inside is visible from Earth, but at no point obscures KIC-8462852. Furthermore, it is positioned such that photon pressure cancels its gravitational attraction to its parent star and directs all light, radiation, and emitted particles in the opposite direction. This directed emission produces a small prograde thrust, causing a noticeable acceleration in the entire system that will eventually lead to its escape from the gravity well of the Milky Way. Assuming constant acceleration to reach its current speed, it is believed that this thruster has been in operation for over a century. No information is currently known about either the creators of these megastructures or their motivation for accomplishing a project of this scale. SCP-3029 Revision November 4, 2019 Item Number SCP-3029 Object Class Neutralized Special Catan Procedures Due to the events of the Peregrine-14 mission, SCP-3029 and its host star are no longer detectable through any means available to the Foundation. This fact must be concealed from civilian society through the use of amnestics as well as by manually editing any data produced by the relevant space telescopes. The original anomalous observations of SCP-3029 are to be replicated perfectly to prevent the growth of civilian suspicion. Description, unchanged from original documentation. Addendum 1 The Peregrine-14 Mission On May 30, 2019, it was decided by an 8-5 vote of the O5 Council that the potential for civilian discovery of SCP-3029 had become too significant to ignore, and that an exploration team must be sent to learn more about the anomaly. The journey of nearly 1,300 light-years was to be undertaken through the use of temporal sinks, of the design used to explore SCP-3200 in the Peregrine 9 mission eight years earlier. Peregrine 14 Expedition Details Objective: Collect data regarding the nature of SCP-3029 and its creators. If possible, develop an effective containment method. Crew members: Denise Perez, Mission Commander; Researcher Jonathan Daniels, Ship's Engineer; and Researcher Eric Kim, Containment Specialist. Flight details: Mission will take place from October 1, 2019, to October 22, 2019. Flight time using temporal sync will occupy roughly two weeks of total mission time as measured from Earth, with a one-way flight time of seven days, during which the crew will be cryogenically frozen. This comparatively extended flight time is mainly to overcome the considerable difference in velocity between Earth and SCP-3029. Addendum 2 Peregrine 14 Audio and Text Logs Earth Date October 8, 2019 Begin Transcript Perez. Good, this is working, Command. Daniels. Wow. 1300 light years later. Damn, temporal sinks are cool. Perez. Shut it, Daniels. Anyway, we've all come out of cryo just fine. The skip's visible ahead and, well, we knew it was big, but there's a difference between knowing that intellectually and actually looking at a solar array bigger than the Earth's orbit. 
Kim, it is pretty impressive, I've got to admit. I guess I'm supposed to figure out some kind of containment for that monster. Perez typing. Well, uh, we got some bigger problems right now. I'm looking at the diagnostics and everything's down. I only have access to this mic, life support, and the comm system. Everything else is offline. Daniels. Shit, really? We're awake for all of 30 seconds and everything fucking breaks? That means the reactor is offline too, so we're on backup power. Perez. Shut it down, I gotta find out what's wrong here. Perez. Fair enough. Peregrine 14 signing off for now. End transcript. Note that without a functioning reactor, and with only life support under power, the Peregrine 14 spacecraft backup battery should function for at least four weeks. Earth Date October 18, 2019 Perez. Hello, Command. Assuming you do actually get to hear this at some point, we're still dead in space but we think we know why. Daniels Distant We've got some kind of interference from the structure. Perez. Yeah. We don't know if it's just a property of the anomaly or if its creators are deliberately screwing us. But we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Daniel's distant. This is really freaking weird. Nothing works, but I don't know why. Nothing is actually damaged, it's just off. Just stopped. Some field or signal or whatever has just switched it all off. Kim distant. Anything I can do to help out? Maybe we can block it somehow. Daniel's distant. Working on it. Not like I've just got a bunch of telekill on this shit with me. Kim distant. That's not how it works. That's not at all how that stuff works. Daniel's distant. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I'm not a containment specialist who didn't bother to bring anything useful to an anomaly the size of a fucking star system. Perez. Shut it, guys. We're here to work, not fight. Command. Peregrine 14 out. Gotta conserve power until we can actually solve this problem here. End transcript. Personal Log Jonathan Daniels. Date October 19, 2019. Drives check. RCS check. Sensors check. Cryo check. T sinks check. I've evaluated all that so far. It should all be working, it just isn't. Everything just sort of died. I came up with a few other weird things in the logs, too. We didn't wake up from cryo because the computer shut it off. We woke up because 3029 shut it off. Drives are the same, reverse thrust was never triggered, we just sort of stopped. Neither were the temporal sinks, means bad things. This ship has been under skip control for at least the last 300 light years. We aren't actually in a proper orbit around the star either. We're stopped. Something is holding us up, keeping us from falling in. Don't know what. Further question. Why build a Scada thruster? Why would anyone possibly need to move a whole star system? Are they trying to get somewhere in particular, or did they just want to go literally anywhere else? I'd just like to note that I don't get paid enough for this shit. One more note. I was looking out the window earlier, and I saw a new solar panel get built. It just sort of appeared, in a flash of yellow light. Don't know where it came from, don't know how it got there, it just did. This place is kinda freaking me out, and it doesn't help that the ship is dead in space either. Got a plan, though. About that last bit, gonna tell Perez about it later. Peregrine 14 Broadcast 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, 97, error, cons remotely disabled. Earth Date October 20th, 2019 Begin Transcript Perez, Command, this is Peregrine 14, we've got some news. As of roughly, what, 30 seconds ago? Daniels, yeah. First clue we had was that our cons failed. Something interrupted our little counting project, and given the circumstances, it's pretty clear what that was. Kim, couple hours later the whole system just shut off into the night. The star, the skip, everything. Gone. Sadly, our cameras had all been offline since before we entered the system. We have nothing useful at all to provide. Perez, whoa, might be wrong about that, Kim. Our hardware is all back on as of five seconds ago. Daniel, shit, really? What have the sensors got? Anything? Perez, gravity's still there, just hasn't caught up with us yet. Speed of light delay, give it a few minutes, maybe we can figure out what happened. Ten minutes of recording have been removed from brevity. Perez, wow, that's bizarre. I'm reading a gravitational field from the direction 3029 flew off in for just a single tick. Look like they've temporal synced the whole system out of here. Kim, can they do that? 
Daniels, I'd assume they can given they just did it. Bet they've been scanning us the whole time we've been here. Think they stole the tech from us? Why build a big sail thruster thing if you can't T-Sync? Perez, I don't know, it makes sense, I guess. Not much is really left to study here, though. We ought to close up shop get going back to Earth. We're almost a week overdue as is. Command, Peregrine 14 out, we're headed home. End transcript. Addendum 3 SCP-3029 Farewell Transmission Upon the return of the Peregrine 14 crew to Earth, a transmission received from an unidentified source was discovered within the spacecraft databanks. Thank you for assistance us. We never developed faster than light movement and have been utilization the great sail to escape calamity. All other species have escaped, none willing to give us assistance. Farewell. Our two species may subsequent rejoin. It is believed that the designers of SCP-3029 reverse-engineered the knowledge of the English language, as well as their temporal syncs using existing files within the Peregrine 14 spacecraft databanks. The identity of the calamity referred to in this file is currently unknown.